I'm gonna show you the best and most efficient ways to navigate in the backcountry so you don't get lost and you can have peace of mind, and also how you can download routes into your GPS devices. Let's get into it. There's two different ones that I use for regular backpacking, and the first one is Gaia GPS. Now, I really like Gaia because it's super intuitive, it's accurate, and it is probably the most popular one I've seen for backpackers out in the field. What's nice about it is that it actually has trails built into the app, so you don't have to do what we'll talk about a little bit later on where you have to download the GPX and then import it in all the time. For Gaia, it's easy to download your squares of maps and then get going. Now, the second one that I use is Onyx Maps. And this one is primarily a hunting app, although they have gotten into Onyx backcountry. Now with both of these, they actually have an elevation profile. And this is nice because if you have a route downloaded to it, you can see where you're at on the route and then basically see where it is you wanna to get to and how many real giant hills there is in between there. What I would really like for both of these companies to do is actually have it where you can select a point and then see how much vertical and how many miles it is to that point. But as of right now, I haven't seen that occur in either one, but it would be really similar to the far out guide that we'll talk about in a little bit later. If I have a route that I'm doing or whatever, what I'll do is I'll usually have them in topographical mode instead of satellite because I like to actually see where the streams are coming in. So where I can get water or where might be my last water source before I have to move on or also where the lines are separated far enough that might look like a decent camping spot if I don't have anything plotted. Let's say that you have a route in mind, but you don't know how to actually get it into your GPS device. Well, here's how you do it. It's called a GPX file, and that's just some type of programmer lingo. I don't really know, but that's what you want when you are nabbing a file to import into your GPS device. You can get these on all trails, which is super common. Strava, which is primarily a running app. And just a little bit of a secret, I signed up for the <laughs> premium version of this for 30 days, canceled it. In that 30 days, you can actually go in and the people that you follow, you can download all of their unique routes, retain that for yourself. And then I just imported it into my Gaia. And I had all these secret routes that people don't want to talk about in McMinnville for the uh, mountain bikers. So so for through hiking, it's a little bit different. Primarily what I do and the most efficient way, in my opinion, to through hike is to use the gut hook or also known as the far out guides app. This really only serves major hikes, through hikes like the Pacific Crest Trail, Appalachian Trail, CDT, that type of stuff. And you have to pay for it, but it is so much more worth the money. And here's why. It has different points already uploaded on the map. So water sources, campsites, town sites, and it'll show you exactly how far away you are from it if you click it and you can also see on the elevation profile how far and how much you have to climb or descend in order to get to that certain point super efficient super fast super easy whereas on Gaia Onyx and stuff like that you have to actually manually kind of calculate what the distance is and you just you don't really know for sure how accurate that is I've got into this many times before where you're out on a backpacking trip you're not quite sure where the last water is and so you end up carrying way too much water or bringing way too much food or whatever. Totally solved when you have the Far Out Guides app because you can just click there, you can see user generated comments on it to see if the water source is still available or not. And you can have that peace of mind that comes with knowing that there's a reliable water source up ahead. How I primarily use this on the trail is every night before I go to bed, I'll look at the elevation profile and I'll do about 20, 25 miles, see what the vertical is between there and then and also what the descent is and see if maybe there is something around in those areas that would be a viable campsite or maybe a stream to camp next to. During the day, I'll primarily use it to determine where the next water source is because that really determines how much water I'm carrying on me at that time. Because I think one of the things I used to do was carry too much water. But Chad, you should always have enough water. A liter of water is 2.2 pounds. So if you're carrying a couple liters extra, you're gonna be carrying four and a half pounds extra water and it's just going to weigh you down it's going to make you slower it's going to make you more fatigued that's why i like to carry as little water as safely as possible pro tip with this is when you download it for offline use make sure you're downloading it with the topo lines in it as i discussed before let's say that the next campsite is 10 miles away it's already towards dark well what you can do is you can look at the topo maps and same as before you can kind of see those larger lines which would indicate that that might be a benchy area or a flat area to camp in now for high 
high routes. High routes are simply where you're kind of navigating with the terrain. You don't have a trail per se that you're going on. It's more of a general route. For that, we have the Wind River High Route coming up and that is actually gonna be a time where I will bring a map and compass to find and shoot bearings to different passes and different summits that we need to get to on the route. For me personally, I carry a small, small compass, uh, but I never really carry a paper map. And honestly, I don't even know what I would do with that small compass if I got into trouble at all anyway. I don't think anybody would really know what to do with a map and a compass that much, but it is a good thing to have. I'm never gonna discourage anybody from not having it. Never a bad idea to carry both of those items. Now for bike packing, it's a little bit different. Bike packing, I will go to bikepacking.com and I'll download the GPX from that site, same as all trails and the other ones that we showed. And then I'll import that into Gaia. But what I'll also do with bikepacking and back backpacking is I will actually import it into my GPS watch. Now from here, I can actually create the route in my watch and I can view it in real time as I'm using it. I've really enjoyed using this, especially for bikepacking because I can just stare at my wrist and I can see exactly where it is I have to go. Instead of pulling out my phone or having my phone constantly on my bike handlebars and constantly losing back. Battery. But Chad, why don't you just get a bike computer? Definitely a viable option, but then I would be running three GPS devices and I just don't think that's a very good use of my money. Honestly, I've been having a great time with just the two that I've been using. So how do you keep all this stuff charged? Now, a couple obvious ways is to make sure your phone is in airplane mode and the backlight is turned down. I wouldn't really encourage you to view your phone in bright light. Obviously, you're gonna have to a lot of times, but if you can get into shadows or, or under a tree or something like that, you don't have to use as much backlight light. Then the other thing you need is obviously an external battery. Now, what happens when you're totally and you lose your phone, your GPS unit goes down, you run out of battery. How can you actually navigate and figure out where you are? There's a couple things on trail that might help you a little bit if you look out for them. Yes, I'm mountain biking right now and I am absolutely soaking wet because it just does not ever stop raining in uh, Oregon. So if you see a log across a faint trail like this, typically that means that that is not the correct trail and you need to continue going on the well-beat trail. These will usually be like little forks off of the main trail. Typically they're social trails, deer trails. Sometimes when you're on a not a very well-maintained trail, you'll see these things called Karens. So basically they're just gonna tell you which direction to go if you're on a not really a maintained trail. You'll see these a lot on climbers trails, things like that. On a lot of the main trails, you'll find blazes on the trees. A lot of times this will come after a trail junction. If you're doing a snow only route, you'll commonly see blue blazes on trees that'll mark the trail because you're not able to see it in the snow. Another thing you'll probably see out in the woods is a like button, which is to like and subscribe to this channel. How do you guys navigate? Let me know down below. Let me know if I missed anything or any other tips people should know when they watch this video. Here's a video I think you might like next.